Welcome back to the bluegrass on this beautiful September day. Uh, as you can tell, it's raining, and what the rain provides us with is an opportunity to talk to you about the benefits of broad ranging environmental socialization. Okay, now for those of you who are familiar with my channel, you know that kind of how we structure our dog training is dogs come in, we teach them a common vocabulary, which is uh, come, let's go, hup, easy, wait, and stay, and then we use our exercise with small challenges course to make sure that the vocabulary is actually useful in a, you know, a broad range of environmental conditions. Okay, Because it doesn't really do you any good to be able to tell your dog to do something, uh, but them not have the requisite physical skill to actually do what you would like for them to do. Right? All right, so we get the dogs out and we walk them around and we make sure that they can climb, they can jump, they can go under, they can go over, and that they have confidence with a lot of different textures. Okay, Because like, it's super important for a dog to have confidence in where they're placing their feet. Okay. Now, one of the things that you might not think about, though, and it's—I mean—it's an easy thing to overlook, is the how rain or water in general changes the texture. Uh, of environmental obstacles. Okay, so we're out here on my exercise with small challenges course. It hasn't rained in a couple of weeks, and so a lot of these dogs have little or no kind of exposure to the traction differential between dry surfaces and wet surfaces. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. I'm walking Bear. Now Bear's been with me for a little while, so he's good at all this stuff, regardless of whether it's hot or uh, uh, cold or wet or, you know, whatever, okay? But look right there. <laughs> Okay, that's Laker. Now Lakler is a you know a hard charging little little uh, what's called Lakeland Terrier, and he's been with me for what what's it now three about three weeks. Okay, and it hasn't really rained much, like I said. So he doesn't have a lot of experience with the difference between the dry small challenges course and the wet small challenges course. So let me see if I can round him up. Oh, come here, Laker. And we're going to walk him and uh, see if there's any difference. Now, so I start off walking. Now, now here's another thing. You can hear in the distance the thunder. So not only do we have to kind of like deal with the fact that the small challenges course is wet and we have the traction differential between the wet and the dry, but we also have to deal with uh, the noise-induced anxiety of thunder. Okay, thunder really affects some of these dogs differently. There's about two dozen dogs out here laying around right now, and at least half of them you're not going to see unless I go get them because they're all kind of buried up under something because the thunder's got them scared. And you might say, Well, Stoney, if those poor babies are scared, why don't you let them inside? Well, if I put them inside and I let them be afraid of thunder and go, oh, well, I'll take care of it for you. You never have to go outside when it's thundering. Then what's going to happen when I go on vacation and I'm on a hike and a thunderstorm rolls up? Okay, can you imagine you saved up all of your vacation days and you're out at Yosemite and you're on a hike with your dog, a little, little, just a little thunder shower, you know, comes up and your dog starts hightailing it to the hotel. It's like, oh, I've got to get out of here. I'm never going to be safe. That's what happens, you know? It happens to people all the time because I get those emails all the time. Uh, fair weather dog training is not good dog training. You have to get out and you have to make sure, come on, come on, Lecter. You have to make sure that the dog understands that uh, the same things are required out of him regardless of whether it's hot or cold, dry or wet. Okay, and that's what working in the rain gives you the opportunity to do. People get everything in dog training backwards. They always think about a little adversity as getting in the way of dog training. I mean, I, I hear it all the time. When it's cold, I get emails. Hey, Stoney, I, I love training, but my dog's not minding very well right now because I haven't been able to get outside and do my dog training. Guys, there's nothing between you and outside except air and opportunity, okay? So don't be making those excuses. You can get out and you should get out and you should train when it's hot. You should train when it's cold. You should train when it's sleeting. You should train when it's noisy, like 4th of July even. Get out, exercise your dog. You see this thunder, right? What my job is here is to hold this leash and send a confidence down this leash and into Laker's body and let him know, dude, I gotta, I'm, a, I'm out here. I'm out here with you. I'm holding on to the leash. We're tied together. Do I seem nervous? If I don't seem nervous, you don't seem nervous. How am I going to get that, that idea conveyed to him if I don't go out in a thunderstorm? Come on, come on, Laker. Come on. 
Now, he might be a little hesitant. He might be a little worried. He might not do a good job. I was actually kind of worried he was going to jump all around the uh, course and slide off. But the thunder kind of uh, made him a little nervous. And since he was a little nervous, he was a little bit, like, a little bit more careful with where he put his feet. Okay, so it worked out to my advantage this time. But in dog training, you always have to look at things in terms of uh, variables. Sometimes you'll know how the, the variables are going to affect your dog training session. Sometimes you won't. But the more that you get out and train, the less those variables will affect you, the less that you as the dog handler, the dog trainer is affected, the less that the dog will be affected itself, okay? Because every emotion that you have gets transferred from you through this leash to the dog, okay? Now we'll get another dog. Work. Yoda. Now for those of you that have a dog like Yoda, which not very many of you guys will have a dog exactly like Yoda because Yoda is a white German Shepherd. Uh, and there's not too many of those around, uh, but other than the fact that they're white, uh, they're pretty much like other German Shepherds, you know. Now, obviously, there's going to be some people in the German Shepherd uh, breeding community that, that doesn't like that comment. And so I'm no expert on German Shepherds, but I'm telling you, from my perspective, they all train about the same. All right. So now, one of the things uh, for you guys that are relatively familiar with German Shepherds, though, is that you know that they have a tendency to be very sound sensitive uh, and also very sensitive to texture changes. Okay. So like you can have a big, tough German Shepherd. I've seen it a million times. Dog does good bite work. He's a good guard dog. Does good obedience. Right. Okay. You put that same dog on a tile floor that's just been mopped they can't even walk and listen i dare any of you german shepherd experts out there to tell me i'm wrong right i have seen a million confident german shepherds stroll through a door only to do this ah and freeze up and their paws go out their toes are like clawing at the towel it's uh, really funny so like when i'm walking a dog like yoda uh you know, i kind of expect for the, the thunder to make him a little nervous How about, i kind of expect for uh, the lack of traction to make him a little nervous and so again what do i have to be i have to be uh, calm and confident myself this leash transfers all of your emotion guys so if you're hectic then your dog is going to be hectic so you'll notice like I knew going into this with the thunder and the increased uh, rainfall that I was liable to have trouble with Yoda. So what did I do? I acted like it wasn't even a big deal at all. I'm talking to you guys. We're walking the course. Yoda is very comfortable walking the course when it's dry. So what I'm telling him is that basically there's very little difference between the course when it's dry and the course when it's wet and there's a lot of noise floating around in the air, okay? Now, Yoda says, obviously there's some difference uh, because this is slippery. I'm like, yeah, so what? It's a little slippery, that's no big deal. As long as you concentrate and are careful with your foot placement, then you're gonna do fine. And look, he's being really nice and he's being really easy. And so for all you people out there that have German Shepherds that get really hectic during thunderstorms, okay? Be really careful to check your own response to thunderstorms because if you get upset whenever your dog gets upset you kind of get stuck in this negative feedback loop okay that also counts if uh, you have a german shepherd and you're out training them and they've been doing super well on the training field and then a thunderstorm comes up and all of a sudden their healing's not very focused they're wanting to run to the car and you get mad at them and start correcting them that's not going to help you either the only thing that's really going to help you guys is being calm and uh, confident up up and of course, you got to adjust your standards because these dogs are a little bit uh, clumsy and gangly, especially in the pubescent stage. Come on, hop up. But all in all, this guy's doing pretty well. Come on, come on, hop up. Very nice. Wait, good, easy. You see, see how he, like, see, see, he kind of puts his feet out in front of him. He's just a little worried, so that's no big deal. Come on, you're almost done. Very nice. Come on, up, up, up. Down. Good boy. All right, let's grab another dog. This one right here will do just fine. Okay, guys, this is Murphy. Come on, Murphy. Murphy's a nice dog. Uh, he's a yellow lab from over in Virginia or somewhere. And uh, some of these yellow labs, uh, <laughs> they can be 
they can be a little barky. And Murphy is one of the kind of more higher strung yellow labs. Kind of goes with this little bit of a curly tail here. I think that curly tail is kind of an indicator of a nervous dog. Now, I haven't done uh, any real hardcore scientific research on that, but I can tell you, if I see one that's got kind of a little bit of a curly tail, uh, they're almost always gonna get upset kind of easily. And when Murphy first got here, like anybody knew that came through the gate, he would, his hackles would come up and he'd be like, rawr, 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 rawr. So again, we get back to modeling the behavior that you would like to see. When, when, when he would like get to barking like that, what I would have to do is act super confident because I'm happy that the people are here to see me. When we started doing the course, he would kind of do the same thing. He would like put his, he would put his paws down and he'd be like, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. People are watching me, the dogs are coming and he would like hackle up and bark at some of the people that were walking by him. And uh, did I fuss at him about that? No, because it wouldn't have done any good because he's anxious, you know. And when you have an anxious dog like Murphy, the only thing that does uh, really like helps you make any progress is to be calm and confident yourself and just show him how putting in the work leads to getting what he wants. So Murphy's a very physically capable dog. And as soon as I started to tap into uh, that part of him that could learn to be confident, then all of a sudden look at him, he's being awesome. Very nice, good dog. Oh, you're a perfect dog. Thunder's not bothering him. The wet, uh, 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 wet surfaces aren't bothering him. Good dog. All right, we'll grab another dog. Right, we'll do uh, Jocko next. Now, Jocko, come on, Jocko. Jocko's a black lab. Jocko is an exceptionally sensitive black lab. And um, I'll tell you something weird that happened with Jocko when he first got here is uh, like at first he was pretty outgoing and like the loved, you know, he's like, like loved running and playing with the other dogs and going on adventures and he was doing really good in a boat. And then we just hit a big snag and like he just wouldn't do anything. And uh, I was like, well, you know, golly, what's, uh, what's going on? And when I looked at his teeth, he was having a lot of teeth erupt at the same time and uh, like he had had uh, like obviously some problems with his teeth coming in, you know. And that set him back about a week on his training where like everything seemed to bother him. Like if you tried to put a leash on him, he would get real shy and he would back away. And you're like, well, golly, you know, why, why do you not want to hang out and do everything everybody else is doing? Well, it turns out, guys, that his teeth were hurting him just real bad. And so like anything that involved like touching him, petting him on the head, putting a leash on him, anything like that, it really upset him. And it didn't just relate to us, like, like he would be out here playing with the other dogs. And uh, like dogs go through very oral stages when they're young. And they would start to like mouthing and playing a little bit. And uh, they would get a little rough. And like you could see like one of them touch Jocko's uh, face. And then he would just go hide. He would kind of go hide under the truck. And he wouldn't want to come out all day. And it was really frustrating, to be honest with you. I mean, it was, uh, it was tough. But then all of a sudden, like, uh, the swelling in his gums went down, and, uh, like, he was happy again. And uh, now he's doing great, you know. Up, 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 up. Good. Easy. Very nice. Oh, good boy, Jocko. He's a very good dog. Now, Jocko is well into the walking uh, with the tension required uh, on one finger stage of training so he's about ready to go home up, up. very nice he's basically uh, immune to the environmental factors the thunder's not really bothering him too much so we're super happy we're like this is our goal for pretty much every dog that comes here if we can just get them to where when they get ready to go home like we can walk them in all kinds of environmental conditions with one finger then that's pretty much a good baseline for the owners to uh, take over from we can't take a puppy and turn them into an adult dog. But what we can do is we can take a puppy and build a foundation that makes it easy for the owner to keep the dog on track. Come on, Jocko. And end up with a really nice adult dog. Very nice. In other words, we kind of take the heavy lifting out of the training. Oh, it's a good dog, Jocko. You're a very good dog. Very nice. So Jocko has internalized the reinforcement points of the course. Lay down. Uh, doesn't require much in the way of treats. Oh, it's a good boy, Jocko. Good, good dog. So we're super happy with him. 
All right, guys, this is the last dog that we're going to do. It's a German short hair pointer. Her name's Bonnie. Uh, and most of the dogs that I showed you today either weren't environmentally sensitive or they have kind of learned to overcome whatever environmental sensitivity that they had. But uh, Bonnie is one that's probably going to struggle all her life. Come up here a little bit uh, there, cameraman. And I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this on camera but like bonnie's whole body is vibrating right now and every time that we get a thunderclap she wants to run and hide and try to get in the building and she's just very sad and uh like she started getting sad well before it started storming you know she knew it was coming in other words so you guys who have dogs that are storm sensitive you know what i'm talking about this dog uh she's a real sweet dog you know, and she loves playing, she loves being outside as long as the weather's nice. But at the first hint of a storm or really even uh, like, you know, like big winds, we get a lot of wind because where my kennel's situated, uh, it really bothers her, you know. So we're gonna walk her and we're gonna try to help her overcome like some of this natural environmental sensitivity, okay, with, uh, <laughs> with fo focused work. Like um, for a lot of dogs, the key to getting them over being nervous in a given situation is to make them tired, you know. And I've been preaching that for a long time. But when you're making them tired, you're not just like making them tired. That's why I'm not a fan of treadmills. You're going out and you're doing things where the dog has like uh, some degrees of success and validation, what I call intrinsic motivation. So when I start to do the small challenges course with uh, Bonnie, my goal is to like let her have some success in negotiating these obstacles in what she considers a high stress environment so that she learns that she has a lot of control over what happens to her, you know? Because when dogs are scared of noise, when dogs are scared of uh, rain, they really feel like they have no control. And by teaching them how to perform a series of a relatively complex mental and physical tasks, a lot of time you can get that uh, fixation that they would have on the environmental factors. You can kind of get it directed towards the execution of the task. Okay. Now this isn't going to be easy and it's not going to work, you know, like very quickly. All right. But what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to walk her around this course until she calms down a little bit. Now, I have to be reasonable in my goals. She's not going to get completely calm, and she's not going to be completely relaxed. But I'm going to try to walk her at least until I notice a real improvement in her ability to focus uh, and, uh, you know, kind of not be so reactive to the rain and the thunder. Easy. So I'll probably have to stop talking to you guys for a minute and just kind of focus on talking to Bonnie. Easy. Wait, and you can see like this typical short hair stuff wanting to get ahead of me. Very nice, rushing through her homework. Guys, with a dog, you have to look at your, when you're out working on stuff, you have to look at it exactly the same way you look at uh, doing homework with the child. A lot of children don't like math homework, so they try to rush through it. If you allow them to rush through it and turn it in, they get a bad grade and, you know, most of the time the kid's okay with the bad grade because they don't really care about math anyway. Well, that's kind of how dogs are uh, with a lot of obedience training. Like, they're like, hey, I just want to run around and play with other dogs. I don't really care about walking on this course or doing what you want to do, Stoney, so I'll just do it poorly and then, uh, like, if I get a bad grade, I get a bad grade and, and go play with the other dogs. My job is to convince them, is to sit down with them and take the time to convince them that uh, we're gonna do the work right. And if we have to do it a lot of times in a row to get it right, that's what we'll do. We're gonna do the work and we're gonna check our work. And then once it's, uh, we've made good progress, then I'm gonna either let her go inside if it's still thundering and raining where she feels safe, or if it clears up, I'm gonna let her uh, run around and play with those other dogs. So either way, She's not getting out of walking in the rain until she shows me that she's comfortable, right? So if Bonnie's lucky, it'll stop raining and stop thundering and uh, she'll get to go play with the other dogs, which will be, you know, that's the, that's, that's the thing that she likes to do. Uh, or it'll keep raining and keep thundering and I'll let her go inside and kind of get away from the thunder, which is, she also considers positive. So she has two po positive uh, outcomes on her plate. 
My job is to make her realize that both of those outcomes are predicated upon her being calm, attentive, polite, and compliant in relation to our vocabulary and our uh, physical skills, right? So in other words, I'm going to make her do her homework and I'm going to make her do it right. And uh, she's not going to get up from the homework session until she's made a good effort. And so see this, how she's trying to rush through it? As long as she's trying to rush through it, she's not going to do a good job. Same thing with a kid sitting down to do his math homework. So she can rush, right? You let your child rush through the math homework. Then you sit down, you look at their work, and you take the eraser, and you erase it because it's wrong, and you say, well, let's just do it again. That way, the kid uh, knows that they're going to have to get their math homework right, and uh, that's the same theory that I'm using with the dog. She can try to rush, but when she does it wrong, I'm just going to make her do it one more time. Very nice. Good girl, Bonnie. Good girl. You're a very nice dog. Hopefully, if I put a little bit of extra attention on her, then uh, she'll start to like buckle down a little bit. Up, up. Very nice. Wait. Good. Easy. Very nice. Wait. Very nice. Easy. Good girl. Up, up. Wait at the balance point so I can help you. Good girl. Up, up, up. Very nice. Easy. Good. Up, up. Very nice. Wait. Good. Easy. Very nice, Bonnie. Up. Up. Good. Easy. Hey, slow down a little bit. Very nice. Now what I'd really like to see, wait, out of Bonnie, is I'd like to be able to make it through the course without her pulling the leash to the point where I have to close my hand. You know, we're not quite at the one finger rule stage of walking with Bonnie, but I think if I can just get her to concentrate a little bit, I can hold the leash in my hand and make small movements and control her without actually having to get into some kind of tug of war with her good if I'm just patient enough and that right there guys that's the hard part because it's raining it's thundering the dog's nervous and she doesn't seem to be enjoying herself it's really hard to stay patient wait wait in these situations you see like right there we got all the way we got five six obstacles and then right here she goes to pull and I had to tug of war her back and that's not really what I'm into you know I don't want her rushing I want her to pay attention Easy, very nice, up, and uh, work with me here. Guys, if you start getting frustrated, then uh, you probably better wrap up your session because these kind of situations here where you start to get a little physically uncomfortable because of the rain, uh, well, like it's easy to lose your patience. And if the dog's already nervous, come on, come on, because of the thunder and the rain, and then you lose your patience with the dog, well, they're just going to be that much more nervous next time. Up, up. Very nice. Wait. Good. Easy. Now one of the things that'll get you sometimes is like, you know, you'll get a lull in between thunderclaps and you'll start thinking, man, I've got it licked. And right towards the end of <laughs> right towards the end of your session, you'll get a big thunderclap and a dog will mess up, you know. In those cases, you just gotta kinda, you know, play it by ear. Me personally, I'm generally of the type that uh, if I have a mess up, even at the end of the session, uh, I'll probably go back and see if I can't, uh, you know, if I can't do it right. I'm a big stickler for doing things right. But I try my best to make sure that uh, right is defined in such a way. Come on, come on. That right is defined in such a way as the dog can be successful. Like you see that right there, We're making good progress. Bonnie takes a misstep, she comes off of the uh, L-shaped dog walk, and I just have to turn around and do it one more time. Easy. Very nice. Wait. Easy. Good girl. Up, up. Wait. Good. Up, up, up. Very nice. Now, let's see if we can string some obstacles together. Wait without having to grab hold of that leash too hard, without having to play tug of war. Easy. Right here, up, 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 up. Very nice, I saved it, up. Easy, 
Very nice. Ah, almost. Look, I might count that one. Wait. <laughs> I had to grab onto the leash right at the very end. Oh, I'm so tempted to count that as a win. Up. Very nice. Very nice. Come on. You can do it. All right, I feel it. I feel it in my bones. This is going to be our good rep right here. Up. Watch out, bear. Up, up. Very nice. Easy. Good girl. Easy. Very nice. Good girl. Up, up, up. Very nice. Wait. Easy. Easy. All right, let's see. Right here is where we're having kind of a sticking point. Go slow. Wait, right here. Wait. <laughs> Pretty good, Bonnie. Come on, come on. It's all easy going from here. Very nice. Up, up, up. Slow down a little bit and wait. Very nice. Easy. Wait. Up. Very nice. Wait. Oh, slow down. You're so close to getting this right. Wait. You see her save herself right there? That's very good. I'm very proud of her. She started to lose footing and she got it right. Up. Very nice. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to go with the double finger cross because I know this time. Come on, Bunny. I know this time we're going to get it. Come on. Very good dog. Up, 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 up. Very nice. Up. Very nice dog. Easy. Very nice. Easy. Oh, you a smarty. Up, up, up. Very nice. Slow down a little bit. And wait. Easy. Up, 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 up. A little bit more posture right here. Wait. Perfect. Helps when I do my part better, of course. Easy. Very nice. Up, 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 up. And wait. Right here. See, I'm, it's helping that I'm swinging in front of her a little bit. Now, the way down. Up, 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 up. Very nice. Very nice. Woo, come on. We're almost there, girl. Up, up, up. Perfect. Give me a good weight. About the time I get her focused, those other dogs are running around. Good girl. Very nice. Up, 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 up. Very nice. Oh my gosh, we are almost there. Hup. Very good. I might start moving a little faster so I can hurry up and get to the end. I finally feel like the end is near. Come on. Up, 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 up. And wait. Easy. Let's turn this way. Very nice. Oh, his double finger cross is working. I feel it working. Sit. Good. Double hand stay. <laughs> and, uh, I'm praying that there's not a thunderclap anytime soon. And I believe most of that shaking has gone away. So, oh my gosh, now Bonnie is super happy because she's off work. And it looks like we're going to get a little break in these clouds. So uh, Bonnie now has a choice. She can either go inside and uh, kind of hide from the thunder if that's what she wants to do. Or she can uh, play with these dogs. Either way, she earned her choice. Alrighty guys, well I hope you enjoyed this video and the lesson that I'm trying to teach you is you got to get out and you got to work under a broad range of environmental conditions. So if it ain't raining, you ain't training. Alright, good luck.